All right, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. So next up, we have Miss Lan Lau, a neurologist and a movement disorder specialist. She will also indulge into one of the fastest growing neurological disorders, Parkinson's disease. Please welcome her on stage. Hi, everyone. My name is Lan Lo. I'm a neurologist subspecializing in movement disorders at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. I'm also the medical director of the Deep Brain Stimulation Program there. So I'm very happy to be with you all today and very happy to see so many eager young minds that's curious about the brain as well as neurological disorders. So first of all, I'd like to make this as interactive as possible. So in this list of names, uh, does anyone by a show of hands know at least one name on this slide? Okay, great. Yeah, I'm so glad to see so many of you raising your hands. So I, I'm just going to uh, say a little bit about some of these names on the slide. Um, Michael J. Fox, as many of you know, he recently won the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his work and, and advocacy work. Um, he's a, a Hollywood um, actor, as well as uh, famous for a lot of the blockbuster movies, such as Back to the Future, as well as television sitcom series Spin City. Ozzy Osbourne, he's an English singer-songwriter. Uh, who rose to prominence in the 1970s as part of a heavy metal band called Black Sabbath. Linda Ronstadt is an American singer whose albums have gone gold, platinum, multi-platinum, and she's won uh, Grammy, Emmy Awards, Alma Awards. And some of you may know Muhammad Ali. He's a professional boxer, and some would call him the greatest boxer of all time. So besides being famous, uh, everyone on this list actually uh, public, publicly uh, disclosed that they have Parkinson's disease. So actually, neurological disorders are the leading cause of disability in the world. Parkinson's disease will actually surpass Alzheimer's disease as the fastest growing neurological condition. As you can see from this figure on the right hand side, this is from JAMA Neurology, one of the prominent neurological journals. In the 1990, there is a global burden of 3 million people in the world with Parkinson's disease. By the time this article was written, there were about 6 million people in the world in 2017 diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And that number is expected to rise exponentially in the next several years. And actually, Parkinson's disease will surpass Alzheimer's disease as one of the most common neurological conditions. So some of you may ask, what exactly is Parkinson's disease? This is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder characterized by both motor and non-motor features. There is a 2022 study that found 90,000 people in the US are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease each year. In just five years, by 2030, there would be an estimated 1.2 million people in the US living with Parkinson's disease. There is a risk of Parkinson's with increasing age. And as you heard in the pr prior talk by Dr. O'Neill, um, there is actually a sex difference between men and women with Parkinson's disease. Men are actually 1.5 times more likely to have Parkinson's than women. So the sine qua non of Parkinson's is actually a loss of dopamine neurons um, in the basal ganglia or the motor center of the brain. So uh, some of the acronyms that medical students use is uh, a word called TRAP, T-R-A-P, and this is an acronym 
that is a list of the core motor features that you can see with Parkinson's. As you heard from the first speaker, dopamine is a chemical in the brain that can regulate emotions. And then actually, it, there's a separate function in which it controls uh, a lot of our everyday motor activities. You can think of it as directing all the movements in your body. So therefore, if something goes awry, you can uh, certainly see symptoms such as a four to six hertz rest tremor, for example, a hand tremor. Some uh, people also have stiffness, which is called rigidity. That's the R in trap. The A stands for akinesia, which is a loss of absence of movement, or bradykinesia, which is a indication of slowness. And then finally, the P in trap it stands for postural instability, poor balance, multiple falls. And I, as I mentioned before, it's not just about the motor features of Parkinson's. This disease can actually also carry with it non-motor features. Things like constipation, low blood pressure going from sitting to standing, sexual dysfunction, sweating problems, urinary problems, cognitive decline, depression, anxiety, apathy or lack of motivation, hallucinations, and decreased sense of smell. So at this current time, there is unfortunately no cure for this disorder. There are, however, great symptomatic treatments. We have dopaminergic medications, one of which is called levodopa, which helps to replenish the missing dopamine in the brain. There is actually a surgical treatment called deep brain stimulation. This is where a thin piece of wire gets implanted very carefully by a neurosurgeon in a certain location in the brain to help with movement, with uh, reducing tremor, reducing the stiffness of the body, as well as helping with, um, with the bradykinesia or slowness of movement. There is another therapy that developed recently called focus ultrasound. This therapy involves using a high beam of energy that's directed to a specific area in the brain, for example, the ventral intermediate nucleus of the thalamus that helps then to control Parkinsonian tremor. Exercise have been found to be also helpful to reduce some of the symptoms. And additionally, rehabilitation services such as physical, occupational, and speech therapies are also beneficial for individual patients. I want to share with you all a short video clip. This is actually a, a short new segment from CBS Boston uh, that was done three years ago, highlighting our deep brain stimulation surgical program for uh, movement disorders. In it, you'll hear from uh, the chief of our division, of our movement disorders division, Dr. David Simon, as well as how uh, find out about how deep brain stimulation surgery helped one of his patients with Parkinson's disease. So one of the reasons why I went into the subspecialty of movement disorders is actually I find this, uh, my job to be quite gratifying, especially from the, uh, the amount of uh, change, a drastic change that occurs when, for example, when deep brain stimulation is turned on. So I think this story is uh, one of the stellar examples of how patients' lives can be changed and their quality of life can be improved, especially with deep brain stimulation for the certain patients with Parkinson's disease. Most people with Parkinson's disease take medication to keep the symptoms under control. But as WBZ's Dr. Malika Marshall explains, a small number are offered a more invasive therapy, brain surgery. Five years ago, Edwin Rivera developed trouble walking and uncontrollable shaking. If I went out with, you know, with my wife, um, my symptoms would be kind of make it, you know, people, you know, people notice. The father of six was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He was only 37 years old. 
Parkinson's disease is an age-related neurodegenerative disorder um, involving motor features like tremors, stiffness, and slowness. Dr. David Simon is the director of the Parkinson's and Movement Disorders Center at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. He says the drugs often used to treat patients with Parkinson's compensate for a loss of dopamine in the brain. The duration of benefit from the most, the most effective one, which is carbidopa levodopa, also, also called Cinemet, it tends to get shorter and shorter as they've had Parkinson's longer and longer, and then sometimes people get complications that limit the ability to take it. Keep up a little bit. That's what happened to Edwin. So doctors offered him something else, brain surgery or deep brain stimulation. While the patient is awake but comfortable, doctors place electrodes on either side of the brain in areas which tend to be overactive in Parkinson's. Wires are then connected through the skin to a battery that sits like a pacemaker in the chest. Using a tablet, doctors can wirelessly dial up or down the voltage delivered to the brain. The goal is to find a sweet spot where the patient's tremors are reduced without unwanted side effects like tingling, slurred speech, or dizziness. Hello. Okay, great. So just, I, I want to pause there because uh, this is prior to the DBS being turned on. So there you can clearly see he has that rest postural tremor in his hands. And then uh, in a few seconds, you see DBS being turned on, and therefore his tremors will uh, disappear. In surgery in June, Edwin returned weeks later to have the device programmed. Within minutes, most of his symptoms were gone. It improved uh, pretty much right away my balance. Uh, tremors have all pretty much subsided and gone away. Um, my ability to work, uh, go to sleep, because my sleep was affected as well. So. Overall, major improvement down the line. So overall, after hearing about Parkinson's, I just want to let you know that you as high school students, you can make a difference in this disease. Some of the ways that you can do this is by advocating for those that you know with Parkinson's to seek care with a movement disorder specialist. Just a, an astonishing only 9% of patients with Parkinson's disease in the US are actually being treated and evaluated and treated by a movement disorder specialist. The rest are being treated um, and followed by their primary care physician or by a general neurologist. And uh, movement disorder specialists can actually, you know, we know more, we get specialized training and therefore we have more knowledge regarding the different medications that's used as well as side effects of medications for example, referral to deep brain stimulation surgery. The next step is you can uh, call or write to your local and state representatives to push for more funding for Parkinson's disease research. You actually can become involved in research yourself. I actually serve as a mentor for a couple of uh, Thomas Jefferson High School for uh, science and technology students, as well as for some uh, Harvard College students. You can actually go to medical school to become a neurologist and movement disorder specialist. And then finally, you can ask your parents and grandparents to participate in Parkinson's disease clinical research, even as healthy controls. So there's uh, various uh, different activities and tasks that you can do to make an impact in this disorder. So my take home messages are Parkinson's disease is the fastest growing neurolo neurological condition. There are both motor and non-motor features to this disorder. While there is no cure, there are symptomatic treatments, including dopaminergic medications, rehabilitation services, focused ultrasound therapy, or deep brain stimulation therapy. And you can make a difference in this disorder. And thank you so much for your attention.